Hey everyone, this is the untwisted voice of Terry G. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video blog. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by again. What I want to talk about today, I want to talk about emotional sobriety. That's what I want to talk about. Are your emotions giving you problems? They gave me a hell of a time in early sobriety. And, and up to this day, I always got to keep an eye on my emotions and making sure that I don't overreact to situations. So that's what I do. And I'm, I am have, I have a lot of sobriety. I've been in recovery programs for many, many years. But the emotions sometimes still come up and they want to cause me difficulties in my life. Sometimes I react to it, sometimes I don't, but most of the time I'm aware of what's going on. So I wanna share with you some of the tips that I've done in recovery to help me find myself emotionally. So if your emotions are controlling you, this is the video to watch, okay? In recovery or out of recovery, I'm sure still everybody will get something out of this video. First of all, I wanna start off by saying, when I was just a young boy, I was having difficulties. At home, at school, I, was, I couldn't read and write properly. I had low self-esteem. I was in trouble at school. I was in trouble with the cops, even under 10 years old. I remember the cops picking me up from school. Imagine that. So I had a lot of difficulties going on. So learning about myself or having a, a normal sort of life under the age of 13 years old really, really didn't happen for me. So I was already sort of mixed up before I even started alcohol. I started drinking when I was 13 years old. I didn't really like to drink at the start, but everybody else was doing it, so I started to drink. But I realized that the very, very soon after starting drinking, that hey, this stuff did something for me that I couldn't do for myself. It made me feel more confident. It took away the, the feeling of that I'm, I'm worthless or low self-esteem. It sort of pumped me up a bit, the alcohol did. It made it easier to dance, made it easier to talk to people, but it made it easier to do one thing, and that was control myself in my environment. And I mean control my behavior, control my emotions, and control my spirit in general. I found alcohol was a really, really great thing to help me regulate myself. When I drank, I basically had three emotions. Happy, sad, and angry. The booze helped me out for a long, long time. But eventually, I came to a point in my life that I had to quit the alcohol. And that's when hell broke out. What are some of the signs that you're emotionally immature? What, what does that look like? What does that feel like? Well, I'll give you some examples that I experienced and I bet you, you will be able to identify with them. Number one, the first one I recognized in early sobriety, how dependent I was on the way people felt about me. If somebody didn't like me, I didn't like myself. If people were unhappy with me, I was unhappy with myself. If I was happy and somebody said to me, why are you so happy? I would say, I don't know, and I would sort of get unhappy. So I was very dependent on the way people felt about me. So what did that make me? What did that turn me into? Well, it turned me into another way we can tell if we're emotionally mature is that I became this super people pleaser. Because I needed positive accolades from other people and feel that people liked me in order to I like myself, I needed them to like me, I would people please. I was an ultimate kiss asser. That's what I was, to put it in layman terms. I kissed ass to get positive validation from other people. I became a yes man because I needed them to validate the way I felt. So becoming a people pleaser is one thing that is, bo is a bullseye for emotionally immature really really is that's happened to me in early recovery another one is i became a controller also and people pleasing is really a, a way of controlling but i used to control people places and things in order for me that i wouldn't get angry i'd run off or you know people would argue with me i'd run off you know control that situation for i wouldn't have to deal with it because i felt myself getting angry or i would live by myself or i wouldn't get involved in in, in things in recovery programs or outside activities because i was too emotional I, I was afraid of my emotions another another one is is that i was explosive people 
could press my buttons very, very easily. And you know what comes along with that is blaming them. I wouldn't have behaved like the way I did if he didn't do that to me. So I was very explosive. Then after I felt really bad, I had a tendency of blaming other people for making me feel like that. You know, I would kill an ant with a sledgehammer. People would look at me and say, Terry, why are you so angry? Why are you so ha sad? They would say things like that to me. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't think anything of it. I thought it was just normal. But I came across as an effing lunatic for zero, zero, zero difficulties. Like that, my, what I should say is that the situation did not equal my reaction. I was overreacting all the time. Another one is, is that you move away from people. I don't mean move away from them physically. You move away from people emotionally. It's hard to, to form intimate bonds in a relationship or with your friends or your mother or your father, whoever it may be, when you're emotionally immature. You don't have the emotional ability to do that because you don't understand your emotions. You're afraid of your emotions. You're afraid to voice your emotions. So having a deeper relationship with other people is is a, is a sign of emotional immaturity or you don't have emotional sobriety. It really, really, really is. We may be present physically, but we're not present emotionally. We have, the, we're in, we have the inability to express ourselves the way we feel because we don't know the way we feel because we're emotionally immature. Some of the things I did to get myself emotionally uh, stable or get some emotional sobriety, or I like to call it emotional horsepower, the first thing I did was I got, a, I got help in recovery programs. I worked the steps in a recovery program. That was very, very useful to get rid of some guilt and shame and some false beliefs that I had. So working the steps in a recovery program is really, really great for your emotional, your spiritual, and your mental health. Another thing I did is I went to counseling. I'm a big advocate to going to a counselor. 12-step programs are great for helping you quit drinking or an addiction, but if you need outside help with your emotions or things that's happened in the past, go to some counseling. Get some outside help on counseling. I was advised that by a person I used to speak to in a 12-step program, and I did that. I did that for a few years, actually about four or five years, and it really, really helped me with my emotional well-being. One of the things I do, I validate myself. So we need to start validating ourselves. If somebody, if you're happy, if you're happy, say to yourself, I'm happy. I validate yourself. Reassure yourself the way you feel. Start recognizing that the way you feel. If you feel sad, validate yourself. I feel sad. Tell yourself that for you start to understand the way you feel. And the situation may you know, may validate that, that the, why you feel sad because you're at a funeral or, or you hurt yourself or you're tired or you just went through a relationship. But don't ignore the way you feel. Validate yourself. Say, yeah, I feel happy. I'm having a great day. Yeah, I feel sad. So my mother passed away or my mother's sick or my girlfriend's sick or my dog died or my goldfish died. But validate yourself. It's really a great way of doing two things. Finding out who you are because emotions are a part of us and who we are. And also, it helps you understand yourself by validating yourself. Don't ignore yourself. Another thing is stop amplifying your feelings. Stop it. Stop amplifying them and, and stop obsessing on them. Stop it. Stop doing that. If you feel angry, sit with those feelings. If you feel sad, sit with the feelings. Don't amplify them and build them up to, to, to mountains. Don't make an anthill into a mountain. Like I said in my one, I would take a sledgehammer to kill an ant. That's amplifying your feelings. So just feel it for what it is. It's not going to kill you. It's nothing bad. It's just the way you feel. So stop amplifying it and stop obsessing on them. Start building awareness in your feelings. This is really, really critical. This has helped me get over, not get over, but stop reacting to anger. Just stop reacting to my feelings. This is what I do. When I just talk to you about amplifying and obsessing. So when I feel sad, 
I just sit with it. And what it does is it builds a wedge in between the pattern of anger that I used, or the anger of feelings. Thought, right, it's number one. Feeling and back to thought. And, and the second thought is where you react. But if we can just slow things down, it'll start building a wedge and it'll build awareness. So we'll start understanding why we're happy on why we're happy or why we're sad. You know, I get sad, I feel down a lot when I'm tired. I feel down a lot when I get overwhelmed. But I would not understand that if I just didn't give myself the time. So having some downtime in between the reaction time will help you build awareness of what is going on. And that's a great, great exercise to do. When you feel angry or you feel sad, just sit with it. The answer will come to you. Do not react to the feeling. Don't do anything. Don't, you know, deflect it, go to the gym or call people and do all this kind of crazy stuff. Maybe eat food. That's what we did when we drank. We felt something and the addiction behavior said, deflect, deflect, go and have a drink or smoke some dope or do whatever you want, but don't feel anything. Feelings are perfectly normal. They're who you are. They're God-given and they are who you are. And I bet you 10 to 1, you are a wonderful, wonderful person. Another thing is, is that when it comes to the obsession part, just because you have regret in your life doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean that. Just because you're sad one day doesn't mean you have a sad life or a pathetic life. It just means you're sad. If you have, if you're angry, doesn't mean you have, you're an angry person and you're a bastard. It just means you're angry. So amplifying again and obsessing, but don't move to those places. If you're sad, it's not because you have a crummy life. It's because you're sad. If you're angry, it's not because you're an angry SOB, it's because you're angry. And it's okay to be angry, sad, glad, whatever. It's always okay to be like that. It really, really is. Where we get mixed up with it is, is that we amplify it and we react to it. Or we feel a negative feeling and we think something's wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with you when it comes to your feelings. The only thing is, is that I'm an alcoholic. I suppress my feelings. I did nothing about anything when I drank. I didn't deal with anything. No wonder I have emotional, emotional difficulties. No wonder. How do you know you're getting emotionally more mature? Or you're getting emotional sobriety, or as I like to put it, emotional horsepower. Well, people won't be able to press your buttons like they used to. People will say things to you, and you're kind of like, okay, that's the way you feel, that's the way you think, but you won't freak out. You won't freak out. That's really a really great sign. It was for me anyways. I mentioned that earlier, but people used to press my buttons like crazy. But as I got emotionally more mature in my recovery and in my life, People are unable to do that. I'm able to separate myself from the person, place, or thing to the way I feel. And that is really, really cool. You feel more in control of yourself. Another one is, is that you don't give in to the negative thinking. Like I said before, you may feel sad. You just accept yourself of feeling sad. And you accept it. That is normal. That is I feel sad, so what? I'm okay, I'm still gonna go to work. I'm still gonna have a good day. I just feel sad today. And not giving in to those negative feelings, feeling anger and not giving in to the anger. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, you pissed me off. But I'm not gonna give in to it till it destroys my life or I start fighting with the guy or raising my voice. So those are some examples of, of emotional maturity. Another one is, is you're able to, to have bonds, intimate bonds with people. Not everything will be surface and fake. You'll be able to have healthy, loving, and caring relationships easily. You'll be able to do that because you won't be afraid of the way you feel and voicing it. Because let's face it, the most important relationship that you can ever have is the one with yourself. 
So if we can't have an emotional, healthy emotional relationship with ourselves, a loving relationship with ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to have a loving and nurturing and caring relationship with someone else. It really, really is. Another one is, is living in the moment. You're going to be more able to enjoy what's going on around you at that very second. You're not going to get hung up on, on crazy emotions, you're going to be open, you're going to feel joy, you're going to feel whatever is going on, but you're going to feel it, you're going to be able to live in the moment, in the moment, and that is a great, great, great gift of emotional sobriety. It really, really is living in the moment, because you know something, that's, the only, that's all we have is the moment, isn't it? We don't have the, the future and we don't have the past. Another one is, is that you will not be looking for distractions. I mentioned it before, but you will not be looking for distractions. If you feel angry, you won't look for something to distract it. Like, I don't know, going to the gym, like I said before, or eating or yelling at somebody or freaking out. You'll just sit with it and feel angry and you'll deal with it in a very, very positive way, a way that works for yourself. Looking for distractions in your feelings is addictive behavior. We did that when we drank. We didn't want to feel, so we drank. Okay, so looking for distractions. You know, for all of us in recovery, becoming emotionally stronger takes a lot of work. We have to work our steps. Some of us, like myself, may have to go out and seek outside help with our emotions and things that happened to us in our past to sort things out before we can get past them and become emotionally stronger. But I just want to say kudos to everyone who is at least trying to be a better person for themselves. Because if you're a better person for with yourself, you'll be a better person to your kids, to your wife, to your husband, to your friends, to your family, to the world around you. It takes a lot of courage to be sober. It takes a lot of courage to look at ourselves honestly. But let me tell you, you are worth it. You are worth it and you will have a great life. Continue on this journey. Keep watching my channel. If you can leave a comment, leave a comment, good or bad. If you have any questions, leave it down below. If you want me to talk about something in my video blog, leave it below and I promise you I will do it. I will do it for you, okay? So just remember, it's one person talking to another person. That's where it all starts in our recovery. So look after yourself because it shows. This is the untwisted voice of Terry G and I'll see you next time, one day at a time. And thanks for stopping by. Thanks a lot.